My name is Kevin Pires. I am a senior applications engineer with Exfil. And today I'll be covering setting up IOLM on the FTB1. So this is valid, uh, it's July, 2021. So a lot of the features I'll be showing you here today uh, were just released in June. So there's really some amazing and, and, and good features that were released that month. So we'll cover some of that, you know, you know itself. So essentially I'm using the FTB1 uh, platform. Uh, with several different modules in there, but the one that I'll be focused on today is the FTB X730C. We have a universal uh, interface, so whether you're using the FTB 720C or 740C, the interface will be very, very similar. So this is the main toolbox screen that we're seeing here. So this is the main toolbox screen, um, and you'll see that I have two modules in here. And again, we'll focus on the FTB X730C. I have several different options here. You might not have all these options, inline OPM, because this is a in-service OTDR, so it does have a, a live in-service port, so that's why you see that option there. I'm gonna go ahead and launch IOLM, so I'll select the icon there, and that will start the application. So here we are in the main interface screen for IOLM. Up here in the top left, you see different tabs here. Again, I have an in-service option, so you see that's why I got that OPM. You see we have a source, IOLM, link view, elements, and information. So if you go to source here, you can basically use your IOLM as a light source, whether it's a modulated light source, two kilohertz, 330 hertz, or you can do continuous wave if you wanna do loss testing. So that's essentially what the source option allows you to do. We'll be spending most of our time in the IOLM tab. This is how you configure and how you set up your, uh, your test. And these different tabs will go into as we complete some test. So you'll notice here on the screen, kinda of how it's broken out here. And so what we have up here is we have the different wavelengths that we're testing. So this particular unit has 13, 10, 15, 50. And again, it also has a live port option. And so yours might vary a little bit. So I have 13, 10, and 15, 50 selected. And over here to the center section is where I need to calibrate out a launch cable. So I'm using a 20 meter launch cable on this particular demonstration, but whatever your launch cable or receive cable lengths are, you can input those in. Um, if you don't know the lengths exactly, then you just go ahead and plug it into the IOLM port and then select launch fiber, and then select calibrate here. And then from the calibrate option, you can go ahead and calibrate out your launch, and it'll measure that for you and input that value in this field up here. And so that's what we have here. So that's step number one. And of course you wanna inspect and clean your connections anytime you plug in and out of the IOLM port. So over here to the right, we have several different options. So we have the file menu, identification, test configurations, and user preference. I'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way up. So I'm gonna to go to user preference here, and this will allow you to change your distance units from kilometers to feet, you know, so whatever value you wanna use there, I'm gonna leave mine on kilometers. And then the default folder here is where you're saving the results to. If you wanna export an SOR file along with the IOLM trace, you have the option to do that as well. So you can set that here. So all this is fairly self-explanatory here. Um, so I set my distance unit, I verify where I want to save it, and I select the options that I want. If I want to tweak or customize my report, my PDF report, I can do that in this section here as well. So those are the two options that I have there, so I'll go ahead and hit OK. Then I'll work my way up to test configuration. So test configuration allows us to pick a configuration specific to this test. So if you're doing the work for a specific customer or group within your company that has specific thresholds, you can create those configurations and then use those. So to create that custom configuration, I'll select default setup here, and then I'll go to duplicate down here. To duplicate it, then I'll give this a name. In this case here, I'll call it IOLM training. And then hit save. And you'll notice it's now selected the IOLM training configuration, and then I go ahead and modify it. So I select modify here. And then I have some different options here. In this first screen, we have something down at the bottom called OptiMode. So this Optimo mode down here. Optimo mode allows you to select custom configurations. There are some of these that are paid options, like SFP safe mode troubleshooting. But what is free options are going to be fast short link and fast medium range. If you don't have either one of these options, you need to update your unit. And so fast medium range and fast short link allow IOLM to test faster for medium sized links and then short links. So if you're doing front haul, say under 9,000 feet, then fast short link will speed up the test time considerably. And the same thing for medium range as well. 
So in this case here, I'm gonna go ahead and select medium range in this example. If I wanna specify the ports that are being tested, I can. I normally leave this unspecified, so I have the option to change it. So I have the option to change it. Then I go to link definition. This is where you can set um, you know, the different things like index of refraction. You can identify splitter types, those types of things. In this environment here, I'm just gonna keep it at factory default. Then I'll go over here to IOLM pass fail. So this is where you set your pass fail configurations. You can set it for all or you can set it for wavelength specific. So in my situation, let's say I wanna set uh, 1550 thresholds. I'll go in there and set all of these thresholds based on 1550. So if my splice loss, maybe I wanna set this at 0 0.2 instead. All right, I want my connector reflection, we'll leave it at neg 50. So you'll get in here and populate whatever your thresholds are based on serverless level agreements that you have within your organization. So I'm just gonna leave it right where it's at. This is all pretty self-explanatory and then hit okay. And once I'm done with that, I just go ahead and close this out. And you'll notice that down here at the bottom, I have IOLM training, fast, medium range, I, you know, um, opt mode. And so what I would do here is I'd make sure that we have that set. And then again, I'm moving from the bottom up, I'll go to identification. And under identification, this is where I could populate my values. Normally what I'll do is I'll revert to factory settings. And then just to make sure that everything is cleaned out, then I'll get in here and turn some stuff on. So right now I got cable ID, fiber ID, but I got a couple of nuns here. I wanna make this first one, I wanna make this one location A. I wanna make this next one location B, All right? And so populate this however you see fit. So, you know, I can put all this information in here. Uh, the more you put in here, the better. And so I've started to populate some of it. And then, I, you know, I, I can put the fiber ID. So let's say that we're starting at fiber 432. I can put that in there, right? Location A, I live in Goodyear, Arizona. So I can put in there Goodyear 1 main, and I'm testing to Phoenix. So, so right now it's Phoenix, Goodyear in here right now, starting a fiber number 432. But if you look at the file name preview, it doesn't tell us a lot. So when I save it, this is how this is what it's gonna look like when I save it. And so I, I wanna make sure and change that up a little bit. One of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here where it says fiber ID. So down here, I wanna increment. So I wanna adjust the incrementation. So I want the fiber ID to increment. So right now it's only doing one digit at a time. I wanna do four digits because I'm doing a lot of 1728s out there. Then I might adjust the stop count at, you know, max. So it'll start at one and then count its way up to 9,999. Or hit okay. So now you see we have a, a leading zero in, in front of that 432 because now it's four digits. Um, over here where it says file name, on this column over here to the right, we have where it says file name. Here, whatever we check here will be populated down here. And so that's important to understand. So right now we only have fiber ID checked. I want location A in there, I want location B. If I have a cable ID, you know, I can put in a cable ID as well if I wanted to. And so here's the file name now. But I wanna change the order a little bit. I want the, the fiber ID and the cable ID after the locations. So you hit this arrow here to the right, I'm gonna move it down on both of these here. So now you see it is Goodyear to Phoenix, cable one, fiber 432. So this tells us a lot more. I'll go ahead and hit okay, and then that's done. So we've nulled out our fiber, we set our configurations, we set our distance units, um, we got all the naming conventions in there. Now all we need to do is inspect and clean our connection and then plug into our network under test. And then from here, it's, it's really easy testing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit start IOLM to start to test. And then IOLM is gonna go out there using that configuration fast, medium range. It'll run out there and do a quick test. And so you can create different types of configurations. You can create them from fiber to the antenna, you know, uh, fiber to the home, you know, different, you know, kind of test scenarios. So in this case here, again, we're just uh, doing this one for training purposes. You'll see the status indication there on the bottom right. That's where the status indicator is. So we'll let it go ahead and do its test. And then once it's complete, we start seeing some test results here. So you'll notice here, just kind of the makeup of the screen itself, uh, we have the distance, total distance, so it's just a little over three kilometers. Uh, obviously, we have a you know, global pass fail here, so there's a fail somewhere. Uh, this is the link view. So if you select any one of these icons, it'll jump to that icon 
on the network map down here. And that's what we have down here is a network map. So the position to that location, so this is the end of the launch cable. I have a 20 meter launch cable, here's the end of my launch cable. Then there's another 20 meters, there's another connection, another 511 meters. So this right here is the distance between, excuse me, uh, this is the distance between these two events, 511 meters apart. This is the distance from zero. So this is 531 meters from launch. This is 1.8 kilometers from launch. So that's what we're looking at here. And obviously you can see the pass fail indicators here. This gives you the span information. So the link loss and the link ORL. And for ORL, we usually want this value above 28 or 29 in that range, right? Above that at the bare minimum. But again, refer to your company specifications for that. And then we have the details of the actual element itself, the type. So you'll see the type here, we have a connector. It's the third event, the position of that connector, and then the loss and the reflection of it. If there's any actionable items, then you'll see that down here. So this one says the connector or bulkhead is dirty, you know, please clean it, reinspect it and clean it. Because we see this fail here, 0.515. Our threshold is 0.5, so we're just over that. So as you select these individual icons, you'll see that there's actionable items for them. I'm gonna perform one more test. So I'm gonna take a, a jumper here, and then I'm gonna pinch it. So I'm gonna pinch this jumper in my hand here. I'm gonna go ahead and retest this, just because I wanna show you what a macro bin looks like. So it's gonna go ahead and retest, and I still have this pinch in here. So we'll let it do its thing. So as it starts to populate, you'll start to see the icons move around a little bit. And then we should see an indication somewhere here, pretty soon, of a pinch. So I'm just scrolling back and forth here as it's testing the different wavelengths, and you'll see right there we have a new icon. That is this. And so now that we're done, if I go scroll over to that event, or I can click up here, remember, we can click up here. I can see at two kilometers, we have a connector with reflection. This is an APC connector. And then we have a pinch in the fiber. So if you read what it says down here at the bottom, inspect the fiber in this area to search for excessive bending or cable compression. And so that basically tells you you got a pinch in the fiber, some sort of cable compression. So if I remove that and retest, then it'll be a lot better. So you see those actionable items, um, you know, on the actual descriptions that they can tell you on the analysis portion of it or the diagnosis of it. And so that's what we're looking at here, right? And so from this point, I can just save it. So I hit the save button up here. It'll save it as a .iolm. And I also told it to save a .sor. So I have a Belcor SOR OTDR file as well. If I wanted to generate a report, I can hit the report button here, and this will create a PDF. I can give that PDF a name, save it to a location, and then we'll have a PDF report as well for that one unidirectional shot. And that is pretty much it in a nutshell. This is uh, IOM setup for the FTB1. My name is Kevin Pires. Thank you very much.